Hi, welcome back. In this Earth Science Lab, we will be identifying different igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks by taking a look at all the characteristics that we have learned about that these rocks contain that help classify and identify them. First up are the igneous rocks. Now, igneous rocks are rocks that are made from minerals that crystallize from magma. That's the only way to produce igneous rocks, and only igneous rocks can form that way. Igneous rocks form on the surface from lava or deep below the surface from magma. And there are telltale signs which tell us if an igneous rock cooled and formed on the surface or below the surface. And that's what we will be taking a look at. The first characteristic we're going to look at with our igneous rocks is their grain size and texture. So if you look closely at rock sample number one, we can see that this plainly has visible easy to distinguish crystals. So this goes, will be categorized as coarse grained. Rock number two, if we look closely at this, this has a much smoother texture, but it's still not perfectly smooth. It's not glassy. So this goes as fine grained. Rock number three. Now, if you look closely at it, we can see that there are some embedded silica minerals in here, but the overall chalky pale matrix of this rock is, well, if you look closely, we cannot easily see the mineral grains that make it up. So this also gets categorized as fine. Rock number four, pretty clearly these are very large minerals, um, larger even than rock number one. So this goes as coarse. Rock number five, again, don't need to look at this very long to know that this is glassy. Very, very, very smooth. Now rocks six and seven are altogether entirely different. This is full of pockets, it's full of holes. And same with rock number seven. So these are classified as vesicular. closer examination of rock number six. If I use my fingernail, you might be able to hear this. The rock is actually made of glass, but the glass is so full of holes that it doesn't have the perfectly smooth texture like rock number five does, but it is still made out of very fine glass. Whereas rock number seven is much, much harder. The mineral crystals that make it up, yes, they're very small, but it really doesn't have a glass-like consistency to it. Based solely off of our results for the grain size, we can determine whether or not these are intrusive or extrusive. Coarse-grained igneous rocks are intrusive, whereas fine-grained igneous rocks form on the surface, so they are extrusive. The next thing we want to investigate is which types of minerals are present in these igneous rocks. So this rock right here happens to have all three of the minerals we're looking for, which are quartz, biotite, and feldspar. So what does quartz look like? Well, we'll do the macro and a micro view of this rock to show you. So the quartz minerals sometimes are transparent, sometimes they have some color to them, but whatever is highly reflective and glassy. Quartz has a vitreous luster to it, so light passes right through. And again, it may be transparent or it may have color to it. Biotite minerals are typically black and they are not transparent, they are not vitreous. They are more reflective. So pretty much all of the black flakes we see on this rock are biotite. And as for feldspar, the color can vary but feldspar is chalky and it has a pearly type of appearance. So no light goes in, the light is reflected and it typically has a chalky appearance and much of the white matrix on this rock shows us the feldspar. So this rock has all three. If we take a close look at rock number two, we see there really is not much silica present or much quartz present at all. Silicon quartz mean the same thing, but there is a large amount of biotite 
and feldspar present. Rock number three, we have not very much biotite. These black chunks are actually silica because they are very glassy. And then there's a huge amount of feldspar. So we are rich in silica, well, quartz, and feldspar. Quartz is a silicate mineral, but so is feldspar. So we should write quartz there. So this mineral right here, number four, we have, again, large amounts of biotite and some feldspar, but it is relatively low in quartz. Compared to our other intrusive igneous rock, which was rock number one, this has much less silica in it. Rock number five. So this one, although it's dark, it contains virtually nothing but quartz. It's just that the quartz has been colored, a very dark color. So this is almost 100% quartz and nothing else. Now for our vesicular rocks, this one, again, especially because of the light color and because if you apply pressure to it, you can hear it makes the sound of breaking glass because this really is glass. So this contains almost nothing but, I don't have any room to write, but this contains almost nothing but quartz as well. Whereas rock number seven, although yes, it is vesicular, like rock number six, there is comparatively very, very little silica present there at all. Very low, very low in quartz. So with all that being said, let's place these rocks where they go. So granite is an intrusive rock with large grains that is high in quartz. Well, that would be rock number one, intrusive, and it had a high amount of quartz. Gabbro is an intrusive large-grained rock that is low in quartz. So this was our other intrusive rock, and compared to granite, it had very little silica quartz in it, so that goes right there. Rhyolite is a fine-grained extrusive igneous rock that is high in quartz. So between these two choices, rhyolite is the one that is higher in quartz because of its composition. It's much lighter. Whereas basalt is also extrusive with smaller, finer grains, but comparatively much, much lower in quartz. And then obsidian is the glassy and very smooth textured rock. Now between these two vesicular, the pumice is the rock that is very high in quartz. That was rock number six. And scoria, also vesicular, but very low in quartz. So that goes right there. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that are formed from weathered and then cemented, lithified together fragments of earth. So any kind of rock can be weathered, broken down by natural processes, such as wind, water, or ice, and then have those mineral fragments, those sediments, cemented, lithified together. Other sedimentary rocks simply form near the surface in the presence of water. There are two different groups of sedimentary rocks. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made out of fragments of sediments and minerals that have been lithified, glued together. And chemical sedimentary rocks precipitate directly out of water. So they really don't have visible sediments at all that we can see. They're not made of sediments. They're made out of minerals that have precipitated in water. So if we take a closer look at these clastic sedimentary rocks, this rock we can see, we'll do a zoomed in version side by side. We can see the mineral grains that it's made of are fairly regular in size, and they come in a variety of colors if we look very closely at them. This rock, we can see it's made of very, very large sediment sizes, basically pebbles that are worn down smooth, and it's held together with a matrix of mineral material that loosely glues all these very large sediment pieces together. This rock, uh, we don't really see the mineral grains. They are extremely fine. If we take a look at the edge of this, we can see a little bit that this has a layered type of structure to it. That's gonna be a clue as to what this was formed out of. And this last piece, again, is made of large fragments, but we can see that these fragments are not eroded and chemically weathered smooth. They are 
they're much less processed. They're less weathered, and so they are sharper. So when it comes to these clastic sedimentary rocks, we can categorize, we can identify these fairly easily. Shale is made of the smallest overall mineral grains, and that was clearly this rock right here. Shale is just compressed mud, and the layering helps us determine that that is made of compressed mud. Sandstone is made of, well, sand, and this is really the only rock where it's pretty clearly made out of sand grains lithified together. A conglomerate is made of smooth pebbles. So that was this rock right here. And then finally, breca is like a conglomerate, but the mineral fragments, the pieces are angular. They have sharp edges. So that goes right here. Now let's take a look at the chemical sedimentary rocks. If we pick them up and look at them, and if we take in, if we take a zoomed in look at them as well, we really don't see individual mineral grains present anywhere. No matter how close we look at these, they're just not visible. Because these precipitate in water, the mineral crystals are going to be far too small with anything other than a fairly decent microscope to be able to see exactly what's going on inside of there. But let's try to identify these. So these are, technically these, are or, these two are organic rocks, but they're still chemical sedimentary rocks. We don't have anything that's gonna go here. So coal, well, out of these, <laughs> it's pretty obvious that this is coal, right? Many of you would have seen this on Christmas, so you know what it looks like. That goes right there. Made of dead plant material. Uh, now we have two kinds of limestone. There's a limestone with shells and chemical limestone. So if you look at this rock, notice how pretty much all around it, it's fair, pretty much the same consistency. And there's really nothing inside of it that we can see. Meanwhile, this one, it's not the greatest example of this kind of thing, but all these gaps within here, um, apart from, I don't know if there actually are any fossilized shells within here, but those come from dozens of tiny little fossilized seashells. So this is fossiliferous, literally full of fossils, uh, limestone. And then this is our chemical limestone over here. Finally, metamorphic rocks are rocks that are transformed. Their minerals recrystallize into new forms and new substances through intense heat or pressure. Metamorphic rocks can also be formed out of hydrothermal solution, where hot water introduces particularly heavy metals into the rock and those metals chemically react, oxidize perhaps with pre-existing minerals, changing the composition of the already present rock, turning it into metamorphic rock. Now, I don't have a hydrothermal solution to show you. These were basically formed from intense heat and pressure. So we have marble, which is a non-foliated metamorphic rock. Foliation is whether or not they have distinct bands. So if you look at these two side by side, well, it's pretty darn clear which one has bands. This one looks like a zebra, and this one clearly does not. So this is marble. Marble is actually metamorphosized limestone. So limestone, if it's subjected to intense heat and pressure, the minerals rearrange themselves into new forms, forming marble. Nice is, Nice actually starts off as shale. So shale can be metamorphosized into many different rocks, slate, phyllite, schist. Its final metamorphic state is Nice. Now this banded appearance comes from, with the insane pressure, the minerals go from being arranged and orientated in completely random ways to they start to line up perpendicular to the pressure that is applied to them. So the dark and light minerals are separated from each other in our piece of gneiss. And finally, there's anthracite. So anthracite is bituminous coal that has been, bituminous coal is a sedimentary rock, but it can be metamorphosized into anthracite, which has this very shiny appearance. It's much harder, uh, but it's also much lighter because a lot of the impurities have been taken out. This is uh, a much more pure sample of carbon and hydrogen, which makes up our fossil fuels.